like I'm a complete pop guy, so now like look at the way I dress and everything. Like I could do get exposure to stage culture as a as a very young child. And um, wow. then one day I just said, you know, Dad, I want to sing with you. Take that off. People should do ten randoms a day. I'm sorry, sorry, Rajendra, please don't kill me. But uh, they should do ten <laughs> randoms a day. It's just that uh, I'm very lazy. Uh, this is a composition of Saint Tyagaraja uh, in this uh, raga. Sujana Jeevana Rama Suguna Bhushana Rama Sujana Jeevana Hello everybody, this is Sneha and today we've got the incredible Abby V in the house. We're about to dive into a very, very interesting conversation with him filled with loads of surprises. He's going to talk about his epic collaborations, his journey so far and a lot more fun. So let's jump in. Hi Abby, how have you been? Hey Sneha, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Long time, huh? I'm good. Yes, yes, absolutely. We've been, been so planning long. this for quite some time. For quite some time. Yes, so absolutely, absolutely. Story. Yeah, so much has happened since then. And um, I'm really happy to see how uh, you've been uh, killing it in, 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 the, in the music scene. So, um, so yes. So I want to start from the very beginning and take you back to your early life and um could you take us through how you started off as a musician and what was the first spark uh you know that you had um that kind of pulled you towards music i do i do know that your dad is very musically inclined but um if you can yeah. take us through uh, how it all started that would be amazing yeah absolutely i mean uh you know for me fortunately since i grew up outside of india um, mm -hmm. You know how there's this whole thing when parents are raising their kids outside of India, they feel all the yeah. more, um, you know, inclined towards like pushing their children into Indian culture and, you know, all of that <laughs> stuff. So going to like uh, part of class and violin class and dance <laughs> class and uh, all the kids over there, like a lot of my, the friends that I grew up with, a lot of us just ended up going to rhythm class and all of that stuff as well. So I, of course, I started doing a, a few of these. I started doing uh, like Hindi classes and uh, going for uh, wow. music classes and all that stuff. But of course, you know, the thing is, I wasn't really into classical music um, so much when I was growing up, because for me, it was like I was so I was always so enamored and so smitten by pop music. And I still <laughs> am. I love I love everything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a complete pop guy. So like look at the way I dress and everything and like I could do a lot of pop <laughs> culture so uh I was just I was smitten by like you know R&B and uh you know pop music and Bollywood music Tamil film music like that was my jam you know like Hindi especially wow. Hindi like Bollywood music was a, was a big thing so we used to watch a lot of Bollywood movies and all that stuff so a lot of it was uh, that's how I got started I got uh, initiated into this whole world of Indian music and my father mm -hmm. as you mentioned he's a brilliant singer so he oh, yeah. um, he performs in uh, you know around North America and back when I was growing up there weren't as many events um, uh, South Asian events where they used to bring in artists from India or South Asia mm -hmm. for that matter to uh, you know North America so a lot of the singers over there a lot of the local North American singers people who settled there who also sang well they were doing a lot of shows um just to keep the art alive and you know just like you know just fun you know entertainment shows and all that stuff so my dad was you know very very renowned he as a part-time thing he was he's not a full-time he's not he's not professionally into music so in okay. addition to what he was doing he just started you know uh, doing some gigs and all that stuff so i was really you know i started that exposure i getting i started getting exposure to stage culture as a as a very young child and um, wow. then one day i just said you know dad i want to sing with you and uh, he said, okay, fine, what do you want to sing? So I, I picked one of the songs that he used to sing quite a bit on stage, which is Made Nana Saman Bhatam, which is a very mm. iconic Kishor Kumar song. It's a very heavy yeah. song, but I was, I remember I was like eight or nine at that time. And uh, I'd said, you know what, I'm going to make this my performance and all that. And I was too young to even know what straight stage fright was and all that stuff. So I remember yeah, it was my correct. birthday. Um, it was my birthday and uh, on that day was my very first stage performance and it was so it was beautiful because like you know I, I had a whole room full of people who were so supportive because when a young child performs it's like regardless of whether they're good or not people I are know so I know so they will it was encourage. a huge yeah. high yeah absolutely very encouraging so it started off on a very beautiful journey and uh, you know then I started performing with him quite a bit uh, so wherever he performed I'd also go and just tag along and just perform and 
I was there part of his rehearsals and all that stuff. So nice. I started getting really into music. And uh, of course, all of this was like pop music. So a lot of it was Bollywood music and all that stuff. Then uh, eventually, I, when I was in my teens, uh, like I was always singing, like I was always singing a lot of music. So I, I, I could sort of, you know, I was practicing my voice, like my vocal cords were like in shape and stuff like that. But in terms of the grammar of classical music, I wasn't really up there because I didn't really connect with it all that much. And then it was in my teens that I started listening to my, you know, I started listening to some concerts and one of the days um, on the on the on the TV, my mom was listening to some concert and um, my gurus who ended up being my gurus later on, Ranjani Shimiti, Ranjani Shimiti Gayatri. So they came on and they uh, were doing a concert and I was in the other room, I vividly remember, and I heard their music on the TV and I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant music. Like. I had no idea classical music could sound this cool, <laughs> and um, and uh, you know, and so I came to the, the living room and I joined my mom in watching that performance, and I was just smitten. I was like, oh my goodness! And uh, that's when YouTube was just starting out, you know, so people started uploading the concert and all that stuff. And I started listening to their music and other, you know, other classical artists and all that stuff. And slowly, I started getting into classical music, and I was just like, wow, this is brilliant. The world of ragas just really like. It just it took me by storm. I just I, was, I fell in love with it, and then there was no looking back. And then, since I was so in love with it, I started learning uh, more, and uh, you know, just a lot of like self learning, like just teaching myself and like wow. watching other people do it. And all that so yeah, that's how I really came into uh, the two forms of music that I really love. One is pop music, uh, which is yeah. sort of my family background, and the other is classical because of my gurus and such eminent artists. Um, uh, so Abby, what has been your most memorable concert or performance of your career and why does it make it so special? Damn, that's a good question. I wish you'd asked me this before because I would have thought about it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, uh, no. You know, one very <laughs> recent uh, memorable concert was uh, one that I had in uh, Gateway of India in Mumbai. So Gateway of India is a very, very prestigious place. Absolutely. Uh, of course, as we all know, it's a, it's a huge, huge tourist attraction. And yeah. there are very few concerts that happen over there. So my first concert ever in Mumbai um, mm -hmm. happened there. It was, a, it was my concert mm, that nice. happened at uh, Gateway of India. So it was a huge uh, outdoor thing right, right at Gateway of India. So nice memorable moment. And then uh, last year I did a really, really nice 30-city uh, tour in the U.S., all across the U.S. Oh, lovely. Um, Amazing. Yeah, so each one of those concerts were very special. It was my first uh, U.S. tour, I think, like a like an expansive one. I've done shorter tours, but this was my first sort of thirty city big tour. Um, I think, yeah, I think those ones, and I think uh, you know, performing in Chennai, like that, the Music Academy was. I performed there a couple of years ago. That was a very, very big one. I really look forward to performing in, uh, you know, like the NCPA in Mumbai. Uh, I see that place mm -hmm. all the time that I'm going to that event for. So yeah, NCPA or the new NMACC, that's also a very Oh nice yeah, place. that's a very nice venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah so awesome. I look forward to those places. But yeah, I think these these stages have been but you know, somewhere I think when you're a performing artist and when you've been performing since you were a kid, those early memories always stand out a little bit more because there's so much more innocence. Absolutely. To it. You know, so like what I mentioned, that first concert of mine or first concert first performance. Yeah. It was on my birthday yeah. and, uh, you know, I got a standing ovation for it. Very um, special, right? Just because, yeah, it's also special. It's so vivid in my mind. I remember it was like I, yeah. the performance went on, like the show went on for so long and I, my performance came in at like 2 a.m. in the morning or something like that. And I sang Made wow. in the Sound and, uh, you know, so it was such a beautiful, so that's very, very special in my mind. So I think, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that is very special. Awesome. So uh, what, is, what is your music practice routine like? What do you do to make your voice sound? Don't ask. Good. You're gonna embarrass me. I should have much more. <laughs> well, ice cream or so uh, cold stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, and I just had. A, I'm, just, I'm just coming out of a cold because of the weather. I'm in Mumbai at the moment, so the the weather. Is yeah, it's a bit raining. Rain no? and yeah. Oh, uh, and I'm not very. I'm not used to the rain one bit. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, but my uh, usual practice, um, if I have to do a concert, like it, it depends on the kind of concert also, because I do different kinds of shows or recordings and all that stuff. But there's a, mm -hmm. a couple of things that I, I do, which are like, um, like uh, some breathing exercises, like um, okay. I'll just sustain a note for as long as possible. And then I'll just do like some, there, there are a couple of like, if you look up on YouTube, there's quite a few breathing exercises. So I start with some of those and yeah. I do lip drills, like 
or like uh, nice. oh, it wow. just increases like the blood circulation a little bit here so especially oh. when you're singing swaram and stuff like that, you know like sargam fast sargam it's yeah, a lot yeah. of those are consonants right like so yes. it's just more like i mean if your mouth is a little bit more prepped it's easier to mm-hmm. I've noticed it's easier to do like the high speed sargam and stuff like that. So that is uh, is is something that I do, uh, and then I do like you know like the regular octave glides and stuff like that, like yeah, stuff like that. So that way I'm bridging <laughs> all of my different uh, you know vocal registers. Like I'm doing the so I start from the just voice moves, yeah, and then you're supposed to do it without a bridge. Like you're not supposed to cut in the middle. Like initially when I used wow. to do it, it was like yeah like i used to do it like that and then my vocal coach this is where like western music um training in it really helps so she really helped absolutely me she was like she made it like smooth so that when you're sort of attempting those notes there's not there's no awkward sort of a bridge um that you're sort of tapping so yeah so stuff like that i do and then uh my guru rajiyanti she always says she has this ridiculous number of she says practice 10 varnams a day i'm like rajiyanti that's crazy who has time to practice 10 oh. varnams she says i practice 10 varnams keel kalathla mel kalathla tishratla akarathla no way so like you know akara so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Says, she has she has very very high standards for practice <laughs> wow but i don't think anyone can do 10 varnams a day or do you at least do can. one should, person they, sorry take that off people should do 10 varnams a day i'm sorry sorry rajiyanti please don't kill me but uh, they should do that <laughs> once a day it's just that uh, i'm very lazy you are kind of known for creating viral videos especially the one um the 73 ragas with abby is one of my favorite um how, how how do you come about uh, you know concepts like these and how do these impact your career and your creative approach i love creating content so thank you for saying that i absolutely love i think i'm just part of that generation which uh, has grown up with <laughs> a lot of online content and like if you look yeah, at my journey yeah. as well you know like in uh, the internet has been a huge it's almost like a, my fourth guru at the internet like absolutely i want to search about so, like i was just thinking the other day you know so many ragas like i told you i would listen to them in a recording or a concert like i remember going to before they were my gurus um, I, i remember going to a ranjini gaitri concert once and um, and uh, gaitri ka sang she just sang a snippet of this raga called uh nalina kathi she didn't announce what it was so she just in the mm-hmm. ragamalika swaram of ragam dhanam palavi she just sang uh, ragam uh, okay. ragam nalina kathi which goes like this sagare ma gare ni sagare pa ma gare re ma va ni sa ni pa ma gare ma va ni sa gare ma gare sa ni pa ma gare ma gare sa ni gare ma that's the raga it's a very beautiful wow. raga so i heard it for the first time i was a, i was i was just starting out on my journey of classical music right so i was like oh my gosh what raga is this so beautiful and i obviously didn't know what raga it was and like i was like is it this raga it sounds like a shankara panam janya but there's no dha and there it doesn't it's not a daivatam but but it doesn't have that so um i was like i don't know that sarasangi i don't know like i, I had no idea so what I, but what one, <laughs> one thing i realized what and i made a note of it and i said instead of going sariga it doesn't go sariga ever it goes sagari mm-hmm. ma it has that sort of a zigzag pattern to it So ah, every okay. time she would sing it and it was just a brief she just sang it for like maybe 3 minutes or something or 2 minutes but within that moment i realized that okay sagari ma pani sa there's no dha and it goes sagari ma it never goes sarigama so i went back home and wow. I googled and i said sagari ma pani sa like i i could tell that that's <laughs> probably like something similar and the internet spelled it out for me it says that's you know there's a beautiful page in wikipedia which has all of the janya ragas like this is a great tip for wow. all the people who are learning music Just search Janya Ragas on Wikipedia. Oh my God, there's this expansive list with all the Arunam, Arunams, and all that stuff. So wow. I mean, I was like, and like for for a kid who doesn't like have access, I'm in Toronto. I don't have access to yeah. like gurus or <laughs> you know people that I can just call up. I don't have peers in person. Who, like, I know educated in this. And um, yeah. I was like, damn, I just I just searched like, Garima, and then you know I just, whatever, and then nalina kanti that's the name of the other <laughs> so boom right so the internet has wow. been a big part of my journey huge part of my journey very so very big part yeah. having yeah so having grown up with that um it's very natural for me to also take the internet along my journey going absolutely, forward well absolutely absolutely and make this more accessible for people 
Um, yeah. So yeah, so one part of it, it, it comes very naturally to me, like just creating content. It's very because I've grown up with it. There's that comfort level, there's that ease. So thinking of, you know, content and just ideas, concepts and executing it, that's a really like that gives me a huge high. I love, I love creating. Is there like a dream collaboration that you're still hoping it, it might happen in the future? Yes. With um, Asha Bhuteji, Asha Tai, huge fan. I'm her. sure it will happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm huge. Yeah, I would love to. As a as a singer, yeah. Like I mean, uh, to sing with her, that would be a huge, huge thing. Yeah. And of course, uh, to sing, like in terms of making music with someone, no one else mm -hmm. but uh, I think you already know that answer. That's <laughs> the greatest. That's a. I don't even know if I can call it a collaboration because it would just be like. It'd be all his grace and I'd just be like a part of, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, yeah, just working with him, just having that honor in my career, uh, it would mean the world to me. So uh, do you have like a production setup or uh, are there any specific tools or software <laughs> that you would rely on except your phone? <laughs> Honestly, you'd be surprised. I have a tripod, which I just got, by the way. I got a tripod just uh -huh. recently and um, that's it. I don't even have a ring light. Um, it's my phone. Wow. Everything is this phone. So, uh, yeah. And you I, still produce uh, such amazing quality videos. That... That's thanks wow. to Apple. I think uh, <laughs> Apple produces good, good quality cameras. So, yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. In fact, just this morning, I, I was just thinking about the, I was getting, I was thinking about getting a new iPhone. But uh, yeah, the yeah, iPhone yeah. is uh, is great. And of course, when it comes to music, I, like if, I have, if I'm working on a new song and stuff like that, I do a lot of my recording um, on some of the software that's, that's available, like on my Mac, I have my Logic Pro, which is the software that I use. Okay. And I have my mic and I have an interface, but it's a very, very mm -hmm. small setup. So basically just one mic and something to connect that mm -hmm. mic, which is called an interface, which will then Perfect. connect to the Mac uh, the computer. So oh, that's, awesome, and it's awesome. very portable. So I've, I've recorded entire like yeah. albums. I've done full like during lockdown. And it's very, I, I would encourage a lot of people like who are other singers who are maybe watching this. And mm -hmm. It's good to get familiar with um, stuff like this like technology the produce yeah, like the be self-sufficient yeah yeah it's great it's great i think the pandemic really helped all of us like a lot of us ended up learning absolutely these skills. but uh, absolutely. it's great like i can i record everything by myself and uh, so now everything like i do video editing by myself i do it on all on apps or i have a week premiere i work on or mm -hmm. i do uh, and audio all of that stuff I do. Yeah, I, awesome. I do it at a basic level but i do it myself <laughs> all right so my last question to you would be to talk about your upcoming projects what can we expect from abby in the near future this is very interesting because this is the first time that i'm talking about this ever so sneha i'm gonna spill Yay! the beans to you for score magazine <laughs> exclusively honored right honored now. very honored. Uh, <laughs> so this is i am actually coming out with my debut album it's gonna be a breakthrough Ooh. album so the last couple of years i mean my journey sort of started about two and a half, three years ago, right? With 73 Ragas, which is my first video ever, and blew up and acquired an audience and all that stuff. And, um, and then ever since I've been releasing a couple of singles and all that stuff, like I've been teasing with a few original songs and all that stuff, but not like a full-fledged album. And a lot of people album. have been asking, and I am so excited to announce that this album is finally coming out. This is going to be my solo uh, debut album. And the cool thing is this song, this album is in collaboration with three-time Grammy Award winner, Ricky Cage, who has composed and produced all these wow. songs. I know Score is very closely associated with Ricky as well. Yeah. Um, and he has composed all these songs. We actually started this project during the pandemic. And, um, you know, it, there's so much thought and effort that's gone into Can't this wait. project. It <laughs> is, uh, it's, it's a very, very fulfilling album for all of us because of a few things. One is it sort of completely um, is representative of like who, who I am as an artist and who Ricky also is, you know, we try to sort of merge mm -hmm. uh, the classical roots, the rooted, traditional folk, uh, classical, all those elements. But uh, mm -hmm. Ricky's production style is also like, he loves experimenting with a lot of electronic sounds and, you know, yeah. um, and like electronic, like, you know, with programming and production. So um, there's a lot of that, that's, you know, there's that beautiful amalgamation. And then um, the very cool thing is that <laughs> this album features, as you mentioned, I'm like, the prince of collaboration, I think, at this point. Yeah. I do so many collaborations and I love doing them. <laughs> so this album obviously has to be representative of that, right? So this album Absolutely. is going to feature some incredible artists on it as collaborations. Can you name some? Me. 
I'm going to name, okay, fine. I will name some. So we have, you know, people <laughs> like, we have um, people like uh, Mani Dayal and Sona Mopatra and Joni Gandhi and we have, uh, um, you know, and some very familiar uh, collaborations, which people have loved on my channel with me and Antara Nandi, me and uh, Shivangi yeah. is also there. Shivangi Krishnamo is also there. But the one that I am extremely excited about, and I'm sure all of these artists will also agree with me, K.S. Yeah. Chitraji is singing a song with me on this, which is a huge amazing, deal amazing. for us because, uh, you know, the fact that she said yes itself and, uh, and yeah. it's, it's a whole, like a music video. It's not just a song that we're doing together. Wow. It's a whole music video where we, like, we're acting, she's acting, I'm acting. Like, it's so one of the first times you're going to see Chitraji the iconic, the legend that she is, you know, doing a music, like music where she's it. acting. And it's, uh, it's come out so beautiful. I wish I could show you a preview I mean, she's, right now, she's a very, like a October. timid and a very, like a, Oh know, my gosh, mellow. the kindest soul I have ever, ever seen. <laughs> I so know. If you had I asked know. me, remember that question that you said, you said the dream collaboration? I would have actually yeah, it's coming true. if I hadn't. Yeah, so it's, a, yeah. it's just that it's already <laughs> dream come true. So, thank you for that. But she's uh, absolutely a dream collaboration for all of us and for it's a huge Absolutely, honor for no me, doubt. label all the other artists and ricky uh that chitraji is um one of the collaborators on the song so finest that finest album is musician. very very special and it's coming out uh very soon um and we're starting uh, this album is going to be coming out uh, in singles so we're going to start doing some of the singles we're going to drop some of the singles and then the album launch is going to happen and uh it's going to be pretty epic. So stay tuned. I can't wait for can't wait. to hear it. Can't wait. Awesome. Awesome. What is your creative process like when you're working on uh, a collaborative project? It's very spontaneous. It's extremely spontaneous, actually. It's yeah, very, like you uh, just mentioned very, about very, very uh, your collaboration with Aruna Ji. <laughs> you just yeah, called her. I like, that. like, please keep all of this Honestly, ready. Like that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that morning, I will, um, of course, if it's a much more like the one that I did with Suresh Ji last year, that mm -hmm. was a full on music video. So we did like an original song. That was a yeah, much of course. more well thought out of course. song. Of course. Uh, where we yeah. did like a full music video, like a whole storyline, and we did the song, beautiful song, like Bill uh, Gates had composed. And uh, so, all, yeah. all, you know, that was a much more, it was a, it was a more expensive project. Hello. And I have a lot yeah. of those coming up also very soon. So stay tuned. But oh, uh, a lot of these reels that I do, yeah, a lot of the reels yeah. are very, and I think that's the fun of it. You know, it's not, you don't have to, it's, it's not a very high end production. It's just everything is just okay. shot on this phone, this one phone, this my, my iPhone. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's pretty much what it is. And it's, a lot of it awesome. is very spontaneous. Is there like a dream collaboration that you're still hoping it, it might happen in the future? Yes, with um, Asha Bhusteji, Asha Tai. Huge fan. I I'm her. sure it will happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm huge. Yeah, I would love to. As a as a singer, yeah. Like I mean, uh, to sing with her, that would be a huge, huge thing. Yeah. And of course, uh, to sing, like in terms of making music with someone, no one else mm -hmm. but uh, I think you already know that answer. That's <laughs> the greatest. That's a. I don't even know if I can call it a collaboration because it would just be like it would be all his grace, and I'd just be like a part of you know whatever. But um, yeah, yeah, just working with him, just having that honor in my career, uh, it would mean the world to me. So one um, uh, final piece of, I wouldn't call it advice, but uh, you know, uh, something that you would like to tell aspiring musicians or content creators. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, <laughs> musicians, and there's two different things. I don't know what I can, I honestly, I hate giving it. But just something that I've learned, right? Uh, it's just honestly, just like the Nike slogan, just do it. Just yeah, please just do, do it. it. Like, you know, Perfect. that's, um, I know it takes so much out of people to actually just, it's that last 5%, you know, you'll have everything ready. And then it's yeah. the last, like, last 5% where you have to actually click upload and you have to be like, okay, I'm going to make it happen. That takes <laughs> so much energy sometimes. And I believe me, I know because for the longest time in my career, I mm -hmm. like I had these ideas like except the 73 August and like so many other ideas that I'm doing now. I probably had them for the last 15 years. I kid you know. I've uh, wow. I've had these ideas forever on my phone and in my mind. But it's just that I was mm -hmm. so like I was so scared and I was like I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Like I don't know how I'm gonna execute these <laughs> ideas. Like I don't have the resources. I don't know how to do that. I, don't, I was like maybe I'll get wait to get in shape. Like I was. You know, I was, I, I felt like I wasn't in shape and whatever. And then once I got into shape, I was like, oh, maybe I'll wait for like, 
you know, good equipment. And then maybe I'll learn how to whatever. And like, maybe I'll learn, maybe I'll acquire an audience and then I'll post. At the same time, like, I just, I, I wonder like 73 dollars up until the last minute of me clicking that upload button. I was petrified. I was like, and you know, even my family, like my parents and everyone, they were like, are you sure about this video? Like, this is going to be your first video out there. Like you really think people are going <laughs> to be like, it's a 15 minute long video of you singing ragas. Like, is it really that relatable? And I was like, I don't know. And I was also really unsure. <laughs> but then finally, you know what happened? A very, very cute thing. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this before. My sister had just delivered a baby boy at that time. Like my, my nephew, so her first born. Mm-hmm. And he had just been like the day that I shot 70 Dragas was the day that he was born that night. He was born that, that night. So he so almost sort of like came in along with my journey. So he and yeah. when I got the video and all that stuff. Uh, 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 two weeks later, when we were uh, when I was about to upload that video, I was like, I don't know if I can do it. So I got him to sit on my lap and he clicked upload. Mm-hmm. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, so A newborn upload. baby had to do that. <laughs> exactly right exactly oh my god exactly so uh and he started it all for me so he clicked upload for that video and then um, yeah so that's how it started Crazy. but uh you know so that's a thing but i look back and i'm like and then it got so much easier after that like i have i can't lie like now it's like i'm so much more used to it it still is a little bit of like oh okay i have to like check things and like make sure everything's fine but it's not nearly as much uh, anxiety but you know, that's okay. the thing. I just say, just go for it. Whether And this doesn't have to be about uploading or like, you know, uh, releasing your music and all that stuff. It's anything. Yeah. Like I get so many messages saying, hey, I'm whatever, I'm like 40 years old or something. Is it too late to learn music? Or I'm in my late 20s. Is it too late, late to learn music? But you know, the thing is, you're not going to know until you actually try it. It's never too late. Absolutely. And you're not going to know. Like you have to like to give it. I thought it was too late. I was in my teens when I started learning music and I thought it was way too late at that time. But like I learned very yeah. fast because I was so passionate about it. So the thing Correct. is, anything you want to do, especially when it comes to like all these creative things where it's not like a defined path. Like if you're starting to be a, a doctor or an engineer, like it's it's a more defined path. Like you do this, and then you do absolutely. That and then it's more, absolutely. you know, it's it's more later. Structured. Yeah. yeah correct. But when it comes to the arts, it's not as structured. So you have to take you need those to try. decisions with all the more absolutely uh, confidence. But I'd say just go for it. Um, all right, so rapid fire. I'm gonna ask you quick questions, only one word answers. Okay, maybe two words. Okay, uh, that's gonna be tough if, for me. I blabber a lot. If you could perform a concert anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, okay, so uh, if you could create a soundtrack for a fictional movie about your life, what genre would dominate it? A genre of the music or uh, of the film? Mohanam? Let's start with Mohanam. Mm. Just singing like a couple of seconds. 